Hey everybody, okay, so here's part two of that vlog. I got cut off before, so anyways, uh, as, as part one was wrapping up, I was basically just talking about, like, well, right, I was talking about the Empire Strikes Back, okay. But yeah, in the 80s, you know, you had a lot of interesting characters, and uh, some of the heroes were uh, more shady, uh, some were more straightforward, but they all were kind of human and relatable, uh, even if they were, say, in a fantasy world. You had Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker and Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. Ortega Harrison Ford is Han Solo as well as Indiana Jones and Decker and Blade Runner. And all three of those characters were kind of similar. You know, they were these kind of smooth talking guys. They would talk the way, way out of stuff. Harrison Ford was was good at playing those those type of characters and heroes. And then you had, of course, the uh, the other two sequels I talked about that I didn't mention were Rocky Four and Alien. So you had you had. Uh, strong female characters and strong uh, African American characters in a, in a popular female uh, actresses and uh, African American actors that, that were very successful right? and ha had pretty successful hits during that time period. Eddie Murphy uh, had several hits by the time period. They did real well. Uh, the biggest one's probably coming to America, and see that one had, had nothing to do with with his race. Uh, uh, at that time, time a lot of African American actors they were in the film. It was it was uh, doing more with the race, and that one was not at all. So that was kind of interesting about it. Uh, although on that topic you did have some that were about the race that were really interesting. You had um, Glory, which starred Matthew Broderick, Denzel Washington, Margaret Freeman, and Carrie Yules. And uh, Denzel Washington, especially, everybody said was great. He stole the show, and people said he was the best actor in the whole film. And he was uh, he actually was nominated for an Oscar for his performance in that one. I don't think you. I don't, I, mean, I, I think he did win, I think he won that one, I, well, hold on, I don't remember, I don't remember if he actually won that one or not, but, you know, I think he did, I think he, I think, I think, uh, he's won two Oscars in his whole career, I think, I think it was for that one, and then the other one he won was for training day, but anyways, and then another big one was did the right thing, and ironically, that, that, that one came out after 89, so he had it coming out, um, the same year is a lot of really big movies like Batman and Ghostbusters 2, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Uh, but even in the year when you had movies like that coming out, Rock, one movie they did real well was was Do the Right Thing, which was a, a spy claim movie. And then you had Job and Miss Daisy uh, also in 1989 with Jessica Tandy and Morgan Freeman. And uh, that was an example of you had these two people that they both were minorities, so that was the main thing to have in common. They were different. They were very different people, uh, and they had a more common, of course, though than than one initially they realized. And that's kind of what which the movie was presenting. You saw two of them together, and they they, they of course played off each other so well and had great chemistry. And um, but you saw that they had, they actually did have a lot of the same problems that actually. In the in the long run of 
<laughs> besides the Jessica, Jessica Tanya was Jewish, right? So they're both wor both Romano, Romano worthy in different senses. That's what they had, had in common. But yeah, so many of the movies of the 80s, though, were very character driven. Even though uh, you had you had so many big stars that were like in the movies, that I, th I think I think they they really were very char character driven overall. Uh, you know, regardless of what the movie was, whether it was a more love with a drama or 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 a fantasy film or a franchise film, and of course you had so many big directors uh, making making films. And I remember for a while, like uh, comedians and comedic actors, they they really were dominating the box office in Hollywood. And uh, even even movies that were like really big, big blockbusters. I mean, some of them, like the the biggest thing I think of is Ghostbusters, which was which wasn't just like a straight up comedy. It was like it was like an action adventure movie. Mixed, mixed with sci-fi elements, uh, but it featured this ensemble cast of uh, people that they were kind of those comedic actors. Uh, the two leads, of course, being from Saturday Night Live, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. On top of that, you also had Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, Sigourney Weaver, Rick Moranis, and Andy Potts, and of course, we cannot forget Slimer too. <laughs> Yeah, and they all were really funny, but uh, so the movie was kind of was was kind of a comedy, but it was also you know you know a big action adventure film with uh, a film with and was it was sci-fi too, and it was of course it was it was a huge hit. Uh, you had similar to that, The Princess Bride uh, was kind of a comedy, but you know uh, it was also an action adventure film uh, with it had romance and it had. Um, swash, bu swashbuckling type action. Uh, and then Eddie Murphy, of course, did Beverly Hills Cop, and then I, f I feel like that helped lead to the um, indirectly maybe to to Die Hard later. With the Bruce Wills, because of course you had you had so many big action stars. You had of course you had Sylvester Stallone as Rocky, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. Uh, we said we said we we said some others already, and ready of course uh, one that we said was Mel Gibson as Bad Max, and of course the you know the All Star cast in Ghostbusters, and. You know, you, but, 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 um, but like I, I said, you know, some of these heroes were more, were shady, but, uh, some of them were more tough, where they all were kind of, were kind of human, and they all felt kind of, a uh, real relatable, and then you had the ones that were more like anti villains, like Darth Vader, or the Terminator, well, I don't know if the Terminator. Okay, he he didn't really become a, a good guy to the second one. It's it's arguably a different character because he because he reprogrammed re in that one. So he's, yeah, he's mainly just the villain, I guess, in the first one. Though, but yeah, he was a he was a big action star. Then he also played Conan Barbarian. He was, he was a big action star, star in that as well. Uh, they talked the, 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 they did talk about Robocop briefly too. I think they talked about of course of course The Shining. With the giant, with, uh, sorry, Jack Nicholson. So you, so you, you, you had all this star power though, but uh, but I th again, I think the films were more more character driven overall for the most part. A lot, a lot of the ones, uh, and then going back to comedies, uh, Nine to Five was another one that was a big hit and probably is, is a little bit of a surprise hit. And of course, fe featured very funny women. And of course, the uh, the biggest one being Dolly Parton, but also Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. And it was the movie was kind of like horrible bosses, uh, but more family oriented uh, in the 80s, because essentially it was about about them getting back at, at, at a boss that was very unfair to them. And then uh, you still know Elias was another one, also with Dolly Parton and Sally Field and Shirley MacLaine and 
Julia Roberts and Daryl Hannah and then in terms of a deer met, which was more of a comedy drama actually, which was again with Jack Nicholson and uh Sean McLanigan, Deborah Deborah Wiener, Dane Dane DeVito, John Lithgow, and Jeff Jennels. I think that's about everybody that was in. I think I, everybody was directed by of course, uh, the great James Earl Brooks, and you know, yeah, you had, uh, and that one was kind of a romantic comedy. And of course, of course, uh, the other really big, big romantic comedy you had, of course, was Playing That Salad, directed by Rob Reiner, and carried on by Nora Ephron, you know, starring, of course, Billy Crystal, Meg Ryan, and also uh, Carrie Fisher. And then, of course, of course, we talked about about Star Wars. So, of course, you, of course, you had uh, George Lucas's influence there. But of course, of course, we can't really talk about this without talking about Spielberg's, uh, of course, movies. So, Steven Spielberg, of course, had movies like we said Indiana Jones already. But then he also had E.T., The Goonies, The Gremlins, uh, Back to the Future, Two Fan Roger Rabbit. Now, the good course. Of course, he he directed all those. The Goonies was directed by Richard Donner. Uh, Gremlins was directed by Joe Dante, and then Back to the Future, two thousand one, Robert was directed by his his longtime friend, who framed uh, um, Roger Rabbit. And Back to the Future was directed by well, his, 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 I'm sorry, I got I got messed up there. I got I Robert Zemeckis, of course. And of course, it also goes without saying that him and George Lucas, of course, worked on Indian Jones together as, as well, too. Uh, although, although Spielberg uh, directed those, of course. Um, but, and then and the Poacher Guys, actually, he mentioned too, believe it or not, which was directed by Tobe Hooper. And all of these films, the Poacher Guys, uh, what was prevalent with them, this is something you see a lot with. Spielberg's movies, and that was especially true in the 80s, which was which was arguably his peak. Was they were kind of simple stories that were the the personal and based a lot on his his real life childhood, but also with the super action element added and thrown in. I mean, E.T. was based a lot off of when, when he was going through his parents' divorce. So he basically just kind of combined that with the idea of this alien named DT coming down to Earth, and it's like the kids could like collect this alien because it's like well they were they were dealing with a situation of their parents being divorced, and the alien who was the divorced from his own home with other people, and they 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 were dealing they were dealing with they 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 both. We're dealing, we're dealing with kind of the loss of someone and misses someone. Even though they weren't really gone, but they were just separated from them, though. And then... Of course, the Goonies uh, dealt with kids going on an adventure that were... that were afraid they were... you know, they were... they were in fear of losing their homes. Uh, you know, I mean... I mean, you know, just it just keeps going. Uh, but poetry guys talked about that. It was it, it was based a lot on all stuff he was afraid of as a kid growing up, and uh, you know, actual fears he had, and uh, just and, and stuff stuff he dreamt about, and him just kind of putting that that on screen for people to see. And you know, it's uh, where what I want where I want to go from from here, of course. And then and then you had uh, Stephen King stories like Stand by Me, directed by Rob Binder, that dealt with the same thing. Um, Rob Reiner, of course, is a good guy. I, I, I like a lot of his work as well, too, because we're going to talk about him a little bit. And they, and they talked about this is Valentine Hostel, which he's actually in as well, directed, which was a mockumentary about a fake band. It was probably about the first ever mockumentary film to really come out. But yeah, but, but, yeah the, but, but, but still, uh, the characters were, were the main driving force of these movies. And of course, uh, uh, Robert De Niro and Raging Bull was was very complex, and uh, you didn't have to be a boxer to enjoy that movie because it was it was more about 
this guy and his struggle to, to achieve a dream that it was about the actual boxing and you know um this, this this guy, you know, he 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 has dark aspects in his past, and he's not he's not perfect, and he's you know there is there is a real trauma struggle with him, and then and the ordinary people took it to an even bigger level with really just exploring uh, human emotions and you know how sometimes they they feel things and they don't and they don't even really, really want to film though, but they can't help but have those. Feelings. And that was, of course, uh, starred Robert Redford, who directed it to a lot of Mary Tyler Moore. And, and, the, and, of course, she was known as more of a comedic actress, and that was a more serious role for her. That's probably the most serious role she ever, ever did. I think it was the only one that she ever received the Oscar nominations for. She didn't win. A lot of people felt like she should have won it because they said her performance actually was really good, though. And then... Um, and then going back to Barbara Zemeckis, Two Friends Roger Rabbit was uh, unique because uh, they didn't have a lot of the CGI like they have now, so it was using our practical effects in two in two D uh, to to bring that movie to life, and it it wasn't easy. They did a very good job with that. Well, you know, with the mixing the action with the all the two D characters, on. Well, what really made it work was Bob Hoskins. Started the film. He always believed that Roger Rabbit was really there, and the other directors couldn't as well. He 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 always believed it. Christopher Lord was phenomenal in that movie, of course, playing the villain, and he said he liked playing villains a lot. And Robert Zemeckis said that you know kind of kind of you know, you know that same person would have. Made like that movie, of course, he was making for himself because he, because he directed it. And I think that pretty much wraps up everything. Uh, I want to say that, but without spoiling too much, though, you watch the special yourself and see what all we talked about about um, related to eighties movies. And of course, as it was winding down, they they did actually did show a clip from from Return of the Jedi, and that also did Poet Society, which were the two films that I would like to for them to talk, talk more about, but they didn't really. Again, too much, but but that's okay though. But uh, with that said, thank you for watching as always, and, feel, and of course, as always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and good day, everybody.